In this video, I'm going to be trying to explain the motivations behind the arch and gouge models. So today, I'm not, I won't be going through the, the models in themselves, but just explaining just the motivations. Okay, uh, let's get through some notation first of all. So the, the main thing that we're trying to model here is the return, right? So it can be daily return or monthly return or year return, but as far as what we're going to be doing today, it's going to be daily return. Okay. The way that you uh, write down return is simply uh, today's price, right? so PT divided by uh, the price of yesterday's price. So I'm talking about daily return, so that's why I'm saying yesterday's price. right? But it turns out um, if I want to do the monthly price, right? so um, monthly return, sorry, it's simply a matter of multiplying them. Let, let's see what I mean. So let's say today's, today's return or should I start with second day's return is the price the second day's return divided by price of one actually no, you know what we say the price of today's return divided by the price of zero return right um, R2 is going to be the price of second day divided by price of one and so on all the way up to R30 which is price of 30 divided by price of 29 right so if I want to get the monthly return from the, this data all I need to do, so R monthly, is simply a matter of multiplying them. R1 times R2 all the way up to R30. The reason is, if I write, rewrite them to, uh, in terms of the formula, you should be able to see that things cancel, start canceling out. All right, and then all the way up to P30 on 29, P29. Right, so P1 will start canceling with P1, so on third day it will be P3 on P2, so P2 will start canceling with P2, and so on, until the only thing that's left is P30 on P0. Okay, so that'll give you your monthly return. Okay, um, in this in this example, like I've, I've written up some code, and uh, what I've done is I've downloaded the NASDAQ data set, so that's the American Stock Exchange, right? and then to take the return, what I've done is divided the closing data by the previous day's closing data. Okay, so don't, don't really concern yourself about the, the, the coding, because that's not really the point over here. Right? So like I'm telling you right now, all I've done is for, for the last year, so I got I got a data set of the last year, which is about 250 tra trading days, right? because you remember you've got a discount the weekends so you end up around 250 days um, and i'm going to show you uh, show you a histogram of, of this thing okay so the histogram so the histogram looks a bit like that okay i'm, I'm not sure if you can notice but the histogram if you especially if you look at the tails it's slightly like you should you start you start to see that the the uh, one tail is better than the other Right, so if I was to exaggerate, exaggerate this a bit, exaggerate my uh, distribution a bit, it looks like this. Okay, so the this side, the, the tail is slightly fatter. Okay, because because people tend to be the way that I see it, people tend to be a bit more pessimistic. Therefore, uh, they like to lose more than. Uh, be optimistic and say hey let's start gaining more okay so that's why this tail is slightly less than uh, this tail usually okay so you tend to see a bit more negative uh, returns right so bigger negative returns I should say okay so that's it's not it's not that they're pessimistic optimistic you just tend to see a bit more negative returns okay all right putting that aside right so that's that's just my observations putting that aside what what uh, most most people do when they're trying to uh, model these things is take the log of it right so they take the log of it so that it becomes a bit more normally distributed and normal distribution is quite important to modeling any kind of data okay so we're going to take the log log distribution and if i take the histogram now so this actually sign look a bit more the tails are starting to look a bit more equal okay so it's it's very subtle change right but it's it's going to be useful for for our, for our modeling problem. Okay, in fact, in fact, it turns out that if if I minus from the return, 
from the return if I minus the log return log return it's approximately going to be equal to 1 okay so let me let me show you some examples now most of the time returns uh, in, uh, within a day doesn't exceed um, more than say 5% okay so if I was to take the log of 5% uh, in fact I should say 1.05 okay I would end up with 0 0.048 right so then that's pretty close to 5% right but most of the most of the observations are around say uh, 0 0.01 uh, sorry let me say, say that again one it's, it's around one percent so if, if it's one percent return remember because I'm dividing price by the previous day's price that you, you actually have to write 1.01 as opposed to 0 0.01 the log of 1.01 is equal to 0 0.01 right so it's just one less so for numbers that are around one when you take the log it just it's it's almost as if you're minusing one from whatever's inside. So log 0 0.99 will give me minus 0 0.01. Okay, it's really only affecting the extremes, right? So anything anything beyond five percent, it'll start affecting more. Anything uh, below, so anything anything beyond 1.05, it'll start affecting. Anything below 0 0.95, it'll start affecting it. Okay, so if I take log of 0 0.95. It's, 0 .0, it's negative 0 0.05, but if I take anything smaller than that, say, let's say neg uh, log 90, okay? So again, it's negative uh, 0 0.105, okay? So if I was to round that up, it would be negative 1.1. Anyway, um, so the whole point of this exercise is to show just because I'm taking logs, it doesn't really change the problem by much, okay? So it's effectively, I'm minusing one from the whole lot. Okay, in fact, like I'll, I'll show you the hist histogram when I minus one from the other, right? So you'll start, you'll just see one big spike, right, around one, and then the rest will be like all these small numbers, and they're really affecting just the tail. Okay, um, okay, now we get to the, the correlation. Um, so the actual motivation that I'm trying to tell you about. It turns out, um, as opposed to what most people think, today's return doesn't really depend on yesterday's return okay so let me like this write this in one color um, so today's return um, does not have anything to do with yesterday's return okay so I can't multiply by this by this by any beta any regression number and get anything useful Okay, so this simply does not work, right? And the way that I'm going to show this is by this uh, function called autocorrelation. What it does is uh, it's going to take today's data and it's going to run a regression for uh, yesterday's data, the day before, and so on, right? So, uh, so if whatever today's thing is, it's going to run a model in, in the sense that RT minus one, it's going to run a model against RT minus two, Right? And then it's going to show you what these betas are, right? And then say whether they're statistic statistically significant, okay? And that's what the autocorrelation function does from MATLAB. And that's, okay, let, let, let me just show you, okay? So there you go. So this is my autocorrelation function. I hope you can see this blue line. That blue line, the two blue lines over there is showing the bounds where it will be statistically significant, right? So, and this is plotting return for the last 20 lags so for the uh, so for the last 20 not, not for the last 20 days right but starting from today if I was to uh, run regression for the last 20 days right that's what it what it will be okay so for the first day it's, it's not significant for the the second last day it's not significant right and for the last 20 days it's not significant at all and there's no point really looking at anything beyond that because it's that's like 20 20 uh, trading days is one month okay all right, so um, so I, I told you right now there's no point in trying to model return uh, in terms of previous returns. But what you can do is model, uh, so it turns out there is a correlation between return squared, forgive my computer, but 
there, there is a correlation between return squared and the previous returns squared okay so I can I can model it this way so if I run my little correlation table again with my squared returns I will actually end up seeing this where where the blue lines are around here right and these these you can see that there, there are quite significant correlations for the last 20 days okay so this is where arch and gauge models really come into play so what you end up doing is rather than trying to, to model it in terms of the previous returns you will end up saying that the return return is equal to a mean plus an error right and this error over here is equal to a variance parameter sigma right so i should say standard deviation instead times a normally distributed epsilon okay so epsilon is normally distributed with mean zero and variance one okay so which means at is distributed normally with zero and sigma t squared okay so the what's really really important about this model is that what we're going to model it as sigma t squared is equal to uh, a constant so let's have alpha alpha is to, uh, to be a parameter so alpha zero plus alpha one times my previous observed error squared right? plus alpha two times uh, my two lags error squared right and so on okay so this is called a arch model where you where you try to model your current variance as a function of the last errors okay so the last errors is simply is simply going to be rearranged in this equation rt minus your predicted mean is your is your error okay your observed error so that's an arch model the second thing that we're going to the second way that we're going to model it is called a gauch model where this tends to uh, perform slightly better by doing this so your variance is actually equal to again you, you have alpha zero and you have alpha one and your previous error squared but you're going to have these parameters going beta one times sigma t minus one squared okay so your pre your previous predicted variance right is going to is going to predict your current variance as well okay and of course your um, previous observed error is also going to have a influence on this as well so this model the gauge model will uh, will be a better predictor in usual uh, most of the time than the arch model because okay, so the problem with the arch model is that you have to have so many of these parameters right so you have to specify how many legs that you're after so I, I think a, I think a good number is about five right so the, for the for the past week uh, what what the observed errors are, have been right um, but gauch can model it with using less parameters right so in this case just two it's just the a and um, your uh, previous observed error and the previous predicted variance okay so that's it as far as the motivation goes uh, if you have any questions let me know but uh, thanks for watching